Father, we just thank you again, oh God, just for another opportunity to be together in your name, in your presence, in your house, oh God. We just love you, oh God. We love you, oh God. Father, for we could be anywhere else doing anything else, but you have brought us here. We realize it is by your spirit moving in us that have given us the desire to come together in your house. We thank you for all that you've already done, Lord God. We thank you for the message through song. We thank you for pouring out your presence, oh God. And we ask, Lord, that you would just help us, oh God. To hear your word, to understand your word. Lord, to take it in and live by your word. So, Lord, we humble ourselves before you and we submit to your authority. Whatever you say, that's what it is, oh God. Father, we're asking that you would get the man out of the way. For your people need to hear from you, not just another person talking, oh God. So, Lord, speak. Bury flesh and self so that you alone are heard, oh God. For it is you that is going to meet the needs of your people. It is you, God, that is going to help us to grow, to mature, to become what you've called us to be, to fulfill our purpose in you. And we thank you, God. Amen. 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 Ooh, you, you know, I, I think this year, this is the most Sundays I haven't preached in 10 years. I, 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 like this year has been wow, wow. But amen. amen. I, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm not mad at all. Thank God for the preachers that came and helped and stood in. Amen. 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 What a wonderful thing. And don't think it's going to be one and done. <laughs> There's more work to be done. There's more work to be done. And and we had the little babies that was visiting this morning. And I saw it. I don't know. But one kept coming up here and the other one picked up the Bible. Right. So you, you can't ignore those kind of things because, right. you know, you, it's like, oh, it's just a child being a child. Yes, it is a child being a child. But look at what they're doing. One, he just kept getting so excited about coming up here. He wanted to sing. Hallelujah. And the other one picked up his Bible and he was coming too, but he had to get his Bible first. So <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't ignore those kind of things at all because God starts working early, early. When someone has a gift and a calling, you start to see those things early. So we got to pay attention and foster and, and encourage those things. Whoa. This is a message I started working on a while ago, but, you know, it just seems like things are heating up again and it had gone down a little bit. But now things is heating up again. And, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about don't be fooled. The dangers of deception and distraction, the dangers of deception and distraction. Let's go back to what has become a, a foundational verse for this congregation, Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now, now you know that that's, that has been, it, it appeared that when we studied that, everybody said, what? <laughs> only a few? <laughs> So it was, it was a good self check because not everybody like, Oh wait, I got to make sure I, I was just assuming I was in, but I better check if it was only a few. I better make sure. Amen. Amen. That's always a good thought. You say, Lord, am I, am, am I still on the right road? Am I still on the right road? But as I thought about that, let's go back to where the problem started. Genesis three. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, you may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. 
For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God and he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Now, we are all living with the effects of that decision. Because they decided they wanted to do something different. Now, they had it made. Perfect health, perfect environment, perfect jobs, perfect relationships, all the stuff that we keep crying that if we had, we'd be all right. All of us believe that if if the relationships was right, if we were all good, if my relationship with God was good, you know, I know he's going to show up in the cool of the day, in the afternoon. So I have my time with him. So I'm not stressed out at work. I'm fulfilling my purpose. Nobody's bothering me. If that was the case, then I'd be good. No, because we had that. And it was only two people. So you didn't even have to worry about your neighbor messing with you. It's just the one person you with. And we messed that up. So for all the people that like to blame God for the state that our situation is in, think about it. The two people that started the party had a perfect environment where God did do everything for them and they still messed that up. So I wouldn't have messed it up. (laughs) Yeah, okay. (laughs) See, because once the devil showed up, they were fooled. Eve says she was deceived, but she was fooled. Adam followed, not because he didn't know any better, but because he was fooled. Now, the common definition of fool is someone who acts unwisely or imprudently or a silly person, someone who is duped. But when you go through the scriptures, the scriptures adds the understanding that someone who does not believe in God or disregards the word of God is also called a fool. Now, God, Adam and Eve obviously knew God existed, but they decided not to listen to what he said, and then they became fooled. They did it. We have to deal with it. How do we get out of it? Now, I want to be clear that when I'm saying fooled, I'm not talking about, oh, they tricked me. Oh, I didn't understand. Then this is what I'm talking about, fooled. You've made into a jester, a clown, a silly person. There he goes. We become like that guy. This is what has happened since the devil showed up, introduced a doubt about who God is, and we went for it. We were fooled. We were made into silly, imprudent People who don't listen to what God says. We were fooled. But we don't have to stay there. Because once you're fooled, it's because of deception and distraction. Now, deception and distraction comes from misinformation and misunderstandings. Because Eve was standing there. She had already known the truth. But then you start listening to something else. So let's deal with first with misinformation. Now, misinformation is a word that you've been hearing a lot. 
over the last year or so. Misinformation. And when you continue to listen to this stuff, you can come indoctrinated with this information. Now, we were on the beach. Beautiful beach. Sunny day. Waves crashing in the background. Gentle breeze blowing. And then somebody comes by. And they set up their little spot. Because everybody, you know the beach, you go to set up your spot. Get your chairs and stuff going. Well, this person ended up planting a flag on a 10-foot pole in front of his spot. Now, I'm looking. Now, it's, it's got to be at least 10 feet tall. American flag waving in the wind on the beach. We were in Maryland. I think it's pretty clear we were in America. <laughs> and and it's a pretty good chance that in Maryland, Ocean City, that the majority of the people that's out there was probably American. And if they weren't, they were here because they wanted to be. So the idea that someone had to plant an American flag on the beach is like you on the beach. Not instead of enjoying the sunshine and the good weather and what God has given, you need to plant a flag 10 feet high. So everybody know that you an American on the beach in Ocean City, Maryland. <laughs> Fooled. <laughs> Fooled because of misinformation. Because somehow the information got to you that made you think that I need to make this declaration that I'm an American. You're on the beach in Ocean City, Maryland. Who's questioning where you come from? And shouldn't you just be enjoying the beach and the sunshine and the waves crashing in the background? Shouldn't you? Do you need to come to the beach to declare you're an American? It just seemed wrong to me. I I mean, and the guy was friendly enough, said hi and everything. So it's like, okay. But misinformation starts with lies. Something that's being told that is not true. It's not based on what is or what actually happened. And it's the devil's main weapon is lies. Because even when the devil tells the truth, it's because he's covering a lie. Even when he gives you correct information, it's to lead you down to wrong information. Because you know the best lies are the ones that got a little bit of truth in it. So the, the truth is the hook and then the lie gets you. Whenever we think of that lies, we're talking about something that's going to work to satisfy our flesh and plays on our fears. So this man, instead of enjoying the beach and the sunshine felt that he needed to declare to everybody else on the beach in Ocean City, Maryland, that he's an American. Because of lies. Because of misinformation. Because somehow someone made him believe that that was in question. Now, well, lies is one thing. Lies can be told, but then you have to listen to the lies. Entertaining the lie is the problem. You're under attack. Somebody's going to get you. Somebody's going to take what you have. So you got to plant your flag and you got to defend your ground. You're on the beach in Ocean City, Maryland. We're not building bulkheads. We're not. <laughs> where's the fight? Who's fighting with you? But because you listen to the lies, you start to play these things out in your head. And now your fears are becoming greater than what's actually going on. So where you should be relaxing and enjoying yourself, you feel like you've got to make a statement. Ten feet high. Ten feet high on a pole in front of your chair on the beach. Oh, Jesus. So the lies, then you listen to the lies. This is how misinformation gets going because you just keep listening, keep listening. You keep listening and keep listening and you keep listening. (laughs) You know what 
happens if you keep listening and you have no conviction, now your mind becomes changed. See, because if you lack conviction, fiction, you haven't searched out the answers for yourself. You're just going by what everybody else say. So you get emotional about what everybody else say, but you didn't stop to find out for yourself what the truth is. You haven't made some things in your life an absolute. So you don't fall to misinformation when some things are an absolute in your life. But if you haven't declared that Jesus Christ is the son of God and there is no salvation outside of him, then you can fall to misinformation. See, and I know I I don't want anybody to get all upset. Let me just make this real clear. I don't care if you're Republican, independent, Democrat, conservative, liberal. I don't care what side of the aisle you fall on. I'm still talking to you. Because when you lack the conviction that I am going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and do what he says, then misinformation becomes the thing you feed off of. When you don't have the conviction that God is love. God is love. He does not inspire hate. He does not inspire revenge. He doesn't inspire hurting other people. God is love. And that's where we get love from God. So whenever hate and vengeance and hurting other people becomes the thing that motivates you, then you have lost your conviction and misinformation is now driving you. There's some things that's got to be an absolute. If my God is loved, then if I do something that's not loving, then I'm not following my God. This is how misinformation gets you. And the other thing, see, if you haven't searched out the truth, if you haven't made some things an absolute, but if you haven't realized that you're in a fight, see, this is my conviction. And I know there will be a day I have to defend that. I know that my God is a God of love. I know my God is a God of mercy. I know that my God is a God of grace. I know that that's the God that I serve. So if there's anything that's trying to make me act outside of that, then I say no to it. And I know it's going to be a fight. Well, why don't you? You don't believe. How come you're not backing? Because God didn't tell me to do it that way. Because God didn't tell me to act that way. That is not the example that the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth gave me. So I will not behave that way. Even if I believe in this particular thing, I will not act outside of what Christ said I should do. So you can have strong convictions about your patriotism, strong convictions about your politics or whatever else. But that does not excuse the bad behavior. It does not excuse being nasty and mean to anyone. We're in a fight and the devil's going to try to catch you on a bad day. Like he tried to get me with the flag. It's like, but I'm on the beach. I've been waiting a year to get back out here. So I am not about to waste my beach time worried about him and his flag. I guess he just want to plant a flag. There was a part of me that almost went to go talk to him. And I'm like, I'm on the beach. On vacation. And I don't get to do this that often. I am not going to waste my time getting into a discussion about why you got a flag on a 10-foot pole on a beach. Because that can't be a good conversation. (laughs) There's no way I can imagine that that would have went well. Because it... You you can't make sense out of nonsense. We on the beach, man. (laughs) Put on your sunscreen, lay out, go go play in the water. We all in America right now. (laughs) Let's just assume we all, everybody out here American right now. Amen. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. So if I wasn't prepared for the fight, if I didn't know that the enemy would try to poke at me, it's like, you just trying to make me mad today. That's all. You just trying to do something to annoy me. And guess what? The guy behind me, I'm going to turn my chair this way. I ain't even got to look at him in this flat. 
Just turn the other way. But you got to realize that you're in a fight. Otherwise, how easy is it to get sucked in? How easy is when something happens is like, well, that's aggressive. And then when someone does something that's aggressive, then you get a little aggressive and, you, you know, you know, the, the key, the, the phrase that's been bouncing around a little bit, like you get triggered. And then, then you trigger somebody else and now you're in a fight. <laughs> the way you keep out of that is that you stay prepared for the fight. It's like, I know the enemy wants to get me. I, I know he does. I, I know he wants to get me moving in the wrong direction. I know he does. So I need to make sure that I'm always moving in the right direction. See, if you like, if you get too tired, you know that's when he's going to come for you. When you got too many things going on, you know that's when he's going to come for you. When the person you love the most starts acting crazy, you know he's going to come for you. It's like, but isn't them acting crazy, him coming from? No, 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 no. Them acting crazy might have not have nothing to do with you. Because sometimes people act crazy. People you love the most do stuff that's like, I, I don't know. I don't know why I act like that. Me getting sucked into it, that's the devil's plan. See, because you can be upset all by yourself. You can be mad all by yourself. I don't have to get into it with you. Because you upset. It's like, you upset? Okay. Can I help? No. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> and I'll go pray for you. I'll go get something to eat, but leave you alone. But if you know that you are in that place, you know things are going wrong, you need to spend more time praying, more time in your word, more time seeking the face of God. This is what keeps you off the slippery slope. Because when you're in the right place, the Holy Spirit say, you're too tired, man. Go take a nap. When you're in the right place, the Holy Spirit says, just turn your chair this way. Then you don't see the flag. <laughs> when you're in the right place, you realize that all of that that's going on don't need to have anything to do with me. When you're in the right place. So you know you're in a fight, but you stand prepared. You stand prepared. Now, this is something that the Lord showed me about this, is that a lot of times we're not prepared. It's when our religion, our feelings, and our traditions get twisted. See, I was good up until the point where my religion didn't answer my reality. I was good. I believed God. I was following God. But then something happened that goes completely against what I thought God was going to do. And now I'm standing in a slippery place. Because I'm not sure. I thought God was going to do this. I thought he was going to work it out this way. I thought he was going to make this happen. And when he didn't, oh, my religion is not facing my reality now. Because my religion said that if I prayed fast hard enough, fasted long enough, sought God enough, that this is how it has to happen. That's what happens when your religion is based on your tradition and not what the word of God says. Because if you read the book, that's not how it goes. You can pray, you can fast, you can seek his face, and it still don't have to go the way that you want it to go. What will happen is that he will hold your hand, he will keep you close, he will give you peace, he will give you strength to go through whatever you have to go through. That is a promise that always happens. But the idea that you don't ever have to worry about it, that's something we made up. That's something we want to make us feel better. When we get stuck in our traditions and our traditions don't even make any sense anymore. This is going to sound funny, but hear what I'm saying. My job has shifted, and now for this period of time, I have to work on Sundays. So now I don't go to church. What? You mean as if that there's no church that has service on a Friday night or a Saturday night or a Sunday evening? You did nothing, so you just stopped going to church because something changed in your life that made that, that you can't do anything about? Now, some people say, well, just quit your job then. It's like, I'm not going to tell you that. I, I'm not going to tell you just quit your job. I'm no. 
No, because then you become pastor. You got a deacon's fund. You got. <laughs> my rent is this much this month. Since, since you told me to quit my job, I guess that means you're going to pay my rent for me, right, pastor? So, no, I'm not saying that. But because your tradition is I have to go to church on Sundays and I only go to church on Sundays, that means if your life changed, you don't do nothing else. Mm. And here's the worst one. When I get caught up in my feelings, you know, that's what the, I'm in my feelings now. I'm in my feelings. Misinformation. When you in your feelings, everybody know that once you get caught up in how you feel about the thing, then whatever somebody starts saying to you, you start to make it up in your own mind to fit. Because I'm in my feelings now. My brain got nothing to do with it. It's just how I feel. Oh, Lord. Oh, just, just say, Lord, help me. That's all. Just say, Lord, help me. We fall into misinformation if we stand on anything but Jesus, the rock. If you know who Jesus is and if you stick with who Jesus is, this is why I said that this is not about what side of the aisle you're on because this is about Jesus. I don't care what side of the aisle that you're on. I care that you're actually doing what Jesus said you should do. I care that when you make a declaration of who you are, being a disciple of Jesus Christ is the first thing on the list. You can't create violence and then start talking about Jesus is my savior. Those things are not consistent with the word of God. So if you want to declare yourself to be a child of God, then act like the son of God. Help me, Lord. So when someone starts telling you, you need to do this, you need to act like that, you need to do this. If it's not consistent with who Jesus Christ is, it's misinformation. Accepting misinformation leads to misunderstanding. Facts become fiction. We rewrite the narrative. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. We want a particular outcome, so we rewrite the narrative in order to make it come out the way that we want it to come out. Facts become fiction. You just start telling a story, and you leave out the parts you want left out. You add in stuff that never happened, and then you just keep telling it until somebody believes you. And no matter how many times you get caught in it, you just keep saying it anyway. And the next thing you know, it's amazing how many people will believe it just because you keep saying it. Oh, Lord. But then fiction, it doesn't even stop there because facts become fiction, but then fiction turns into fantasy. The story completely detaches from reality. There's no, there's no more truth in it at all. It is just something that somebody made up in their mind. And this becomes the problem. Once the fiction turns to fantasy, then truth is not even relevant anymore. Nobody cares about what the truth is anymore. You just keep talking and talking, making up stories, saying it over and over and over again, and then it doesn't matter. But then... When facts become fiction, then fiction becomes fantasy, then fantasy actually becomes reality. What was nonsense now seems to make sense to you. The ability to understand actually becomes corrupted. You can get to the place where you're no longer even processing the information. No matter what's being told, no matter what truth is being given to you, you no longer have the ability to understand it. This is what happens when you allow misinformation to reign in your mind. We end up living in a world that's created inside of our own minds. It's when our thoughts replace the word of God. What's in my mind What's happening in my head becomes the only thing that actually exists. 
And once you lose the ability to understand, then you're going to make mistakes. So you have misinformation, you have misunderstanding, then it will always lead to mistakes. Now, there's two kinds of mistakes, and I got a pet peeve about this. People do something, and then they say, well, I made a mistake. Well, there's two kinds. There's willful mistakes, and there's ignorance mistakes. Now, if you're ignorant, you ain't know. And a lot of times, you don't even know you didn't know. So you was honest in what you did, because it's like, oops, I wasn't even aware that's what was going on. But then there are the willful mistakes. You were not confused. You knew exactly what was going on. But you thought you could get away with it. So when people say, oh, I made a mistake, it's like you sure did, but it was willful. That was a mistake you made on purpose. (laughs) I know it sounds kind of rough, but I've, I've had this argument. Oh, I made a mistake. It's like you knew what you was doing before you did it. Yes, it was a mistake, but don't act like you got, ooh, oops, oops. It was no oops. That was a deliberate thing you did because you was trying to make something happen. And now that it didn't work out the way that you want, now you say, oh, I made a mistake. You sure did, but it was willful and it could have been avoided. <laughs> you know why that happens is because you were fooled. <laughs> That whatever was going on, the things that you wanted, the stuff that you was listening to, fooled you. Made you into a jester, a clown, a silly person. Because you were listening to stuff that you shouldn't have been listening to, you end up fooled. Now, understand this. Disobeying the word of God is always a mistake. Now, if you didn't know it was in the word of God, then that was ignorance. And you can learn from that. That's honest. But if you know that's what the word of God said and you deliberately decided to do something else, when the thing blows up in your face, don't start crying. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. Like Adam and Eve. Oh, we, I was deceived. And Adam, oh, I, I did it because Eve, Eve did it. I, I, I just did it because of her. Did you know what God said before you did it? Yes, you did. Did Were you clear on, on the instructions? Yes, sir. do not eat. <laughs> do not eat. That was pretty clear. It wasn't you didn't have to go to school to learn that. Do not eat. Don't put it in your mouth. Don't eat. You knew and you did it and you just thought something different was going to happen other than what God said. Now, now for... I'm 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 gonna ask for a show of hands. How many people have been fooled? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate that. Hope y'all out there in Zoom raise your hands too. The understanding that there have been times without question, you knew that's what God said to do or not do, and you chose to do something else. At that point, you were fooled. made into a jester, a silly person. Disobeying the word is always a mistake because why not do what love says to do? Why not do what kindness says to do? Why not do what justice and righteousness says to do? Why not? Because I don't want to be kind. I don't want to be just. I don't want to be righteous. I don't want to. I want to be mean. I want to hurt you because you hurt me. So I want to hurt you back. You've been fooled. Every time you think like that, you've been fooled. Every time we allow ourselves to get into that vengeful attitude, we have been fooled. So what's the end? This is the dangers of deception and distraction. See, because the enemy puts in stuff that starts to tell you stuff that's not true. Then once he gets your mind thinking about those things, then it's like, well, look over here. We'll, We'll look over here. Now, God is here, but the enemy says, look over here. 
He has you start looking at the things you shouldn't be looking at or have no reason to be looking at because he's already feeding you the lies. This is the danger of deception and distraction because you end up being fooled. If you know God, if you know what God wants, if you know what he desires from you, then the way that you stop that is you don't listen to stuff that you know is not true. You don't listen to stuff that is contrary to the word of God. You can't say that I'm standing up for the things of Christ and don't stand up for what Christ stood up for. You can't say that I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But you want to hurt people. You can't say that I'm standing up for the things of God and then you give in to lies, obvious lies. You end up being fooled. You end up on a beach with a ten, with a flag on a 10-foot pole in front of your beach chair instead of just sitting on the beach enjoying yourself. Somehow you feel like you've got to defend your plot of land. It's like we're on the beach. It don't belong to you. It belongs to all of us. You plant a flag when you declare this is mine. It's like, who said it wasn't? Who's trying to take it from you? We can't come to church. They're trying to take away our religious freedom. Who said you can't come to church? Well, you can't come in the building because you're spreading the disease. Well, people are actually dying. Oh, that's a fake. Did you talk to any nurses? Did you talk to any doctors? Do you think these people are just making this stuff up? Well, you can't trust the government. It's like, well, we all figured that out. <laughs> we, I, look, I'm not ashamed to say it. It's like, look, if you believe everything that all of, any of them are saying, you need to take a moment and pray. Because it's pretty obvious that ain't nobody telling the truth. No, the, either side of the aisle. Everybody just saying whatever they want to say to get what they want to get. But we are children of God. And as long as we're following Christ, we won't be fooled. Because when what you say violates what the word of God says, then I know that you're trying to fool me. When you're trying to make me feel something that's contrary to what Christ said I should feel, I know you are trying to fool me. When you want to put murderous, vengeful thoughts in my heart, then I know you are trying to fool me. When you want me to hate people that don't agree with what I agree with, I know you are trying to fool me. Why? Because when Jesus walked this earth, he walked in mercy and love and grace and kindness. And he reached out to everybody, even the people who they people thought, "Mm, mm, what's up with this dude hanging out with the people that's drinking? What's up with this dude touching lepers? What's up with, what's, hey, what kind of guy is this? Because we know that woman that was hanging around her. We know what kind of reputation she had. And if he was really a man of God, he would have known too. What kind of dude is this? It's like, but that's the one that I came to save. Hallelujah. Those are the ones that need my help. Those are the ones that need healing. Those are the ones that need my presence in their life. And when you're trying to tell me something different, you're trying to fool me. When you're telling me that fighting against helping people is the right thing to do, you're trying to fool me. You're trying to fool me. When you're telling me, well, just ignore it because it's not real and people are actually dying, you're trying to fool me. When you're telling me, oh, just take this and everything will be fine, you're trying to fool me. <laughs> Don't tell me just because I got this shot that means everything is fine. You're trying to fool me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. If I prayed... And I asked God, what should I do? And the Lord gave me permission to do it. Then I know I'm okay. Doing it because you told me I should do it. You trying to fool me. 
you trying to fool me because my health and my strength is in the hands of the Lord, not in some vaccine, not in what someone said. God is going to protect me. So if God tell me to get the vaccine, then I'm good. I can get a vaccine. If God tell me not to get a vaccine, then God told me not to get a vaccine. But not because you said so. Because you just trying to fool me. Oh, Ooh, Lord. So the message Don't be fooled. Don't let the world and all the things that's going on make a clown out of you. Make a jester out of you. Make you into a silly person. Plant your feet in the word of God. Surrender to the spirit of the living God. And whatever he tell you to do, that's what he tell you to do. And I'll just say this and I'm done. Pray for those who you see who have been fooled. Pray for those who you see have been fooled. Because I I read an article that someone said that don't call it a vaccine, call it a bioweapon. Because it's mind control. It's changing people's thoughts. And I'm like, you've been fooled. Because all you got to do is talk to some people who've gotten the vaccine and have their minds been changed. Are they different than they were before they took it? I mean, it's, it's a simple thing to do. This is, this, is, this is If you really think that there's something in the virus that's actually controlling and changing people, well, there's been millions of people that's already taken it. Talk to a few. And are they now zombies that's sold out to the state? Or are they still the same people they were before? And there was one people that said that the virus, the, the vaccine will make you stop believing in Jesus. Fooled. Fooled. Because have you talked to any people that believed in Jesus, then got the shot, and then stopped believing in Jesus after they took the shot? Fooled. Fooled. But if we don't stand on the word of God, it could happen to us. Don't be fooled. Bow your heads with me.